So hi everyone, you already learned how to encode different channels using D3. Now let's take a look at a way simpler option that is to use Vegalite API. So for that, I have fort uh, the encoding channels on D3 in Scratchbook notebook that we created previously for D3. And then I'm creating a one for the Vegalite and I'm going to try to replicate as many as the charts that we did in there in here uh, as possible. So basically, as you can see, we have the same penguins data set and uh, we are going to start with the quantitative attributes that remember we're going, we have the magnitude channels that use quantitative attributes and the identity channels that use ordinal um, or categorical attributes. And then uh, the first thing will be to import Vegalite. So we can do that just if you're using observable just by doing something like this. So from the Vega account, we are going to import the Vega Lite API um, notebook. Uh, you don't need to know this by memory, but I have done it so many times that you already know that. So now I can go, and sorry for all the scrolling, back to the top. Let's start using that. So if you want to create something like this, like this is how you do it. You start by saying, I want to create a Vega Lite chart. My mark, and it's going to be a circle, and then my data, the data that I want to use for this chart is the data that I have up here. And then I just want to render my chart. So this creates my most basic chart. And then for going and creating that specific one, you just say, I want to change the encoding and I want to use uh, for X, I want to use the field quantitative. That is going to be, I can either write that directly and since I already have that in a variable, this one, and voila, you have a chart. <laughs> so this one is, uh, develops all or writes all of this code. So it, the beauty of Vegalite is that it has very smart standards. I am just saying that I just need X for the um, for this quantitative attribute. And I'm saying that I want to treat that as a quantitative attribute. If you change this and you say I want to change it as a nominal attribute, then it's going to show you a separate order and a line, as you see here. Ordinal, it's pretty similar. The only difference is that it will keep the order and that changes specifically for color channels. You're going to see that in a minute. So if you just leave it like this, then we can also change some other attributes to make it like closer to the other one on the bottom. We can, for instance, pass that we don't want uh, this to use zero. So it will be something like this. If you wanted to use the whole width, then we can pass that and say this is 0.8 or something, maybe a little bit more, 0.9. Uh, you sometimes need to leave a little wiggle room in there so it has access and things like that. So, and finally, if you want to change, for instance, the size of the elements, then you can do that and just pass in here an actual value. So this is an area, so that's why it doesn't matter. It's not like 200 pixels, it's like 200 pixel squares, I guess. Um, and then the other beauty of Vegalite is that you can change marks very easily. We choose here to use circle, but for instance, there is another one that is called point that by default use uh, just the, 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 the stroke. And it's, it can be a little bit better with uh, overlapping elements, as you can see in here. Um, point also has a nice feature that you can change what is the shape that you're going to be using in there. So for instance, later in another example, we are going to be using wedges that are like these uh, elements. You can also use arrows and um, all of different elements in here. So for the moment, you can do that. The other thing is that um, like Jeffrey here, I have seen him and some people of the Vegalite team also passing an undefined mark in here and then just saying what is the type of mark that you want to use. For instance, in this case, point, something like this. Okay. So if you want to know what are the different marks that you can use, just search on Google for Vegalite marks, and then it's going to take you probably to this page. It's the documentation for Vegalite, the JSON version, not the Vegalite API, that is the JavaScript version. And then in here, you can see all of the different marks that you can use. So for instance, for this specific chart, one that could be also useful is the tick. Although, because I'm passing this size so big, it's actually bit really big, but now I actually have more space. So that's one like replication of that. And in here, it's also going to be nice that you can see all of the different configurations that you can change for each one of those. So take a look at this documentation is quite useful. So uh, the other thing we can do is go to the next chart. 
So this one, I don't really know how to create that specific one, but what I can, can create, what I can create is that I can say, you know what, separate this into columns. And then the field I want to use for that is an, it's a quantitative, a categorical attribute that is going to be the species. Species, and you're going to see below that I'm actually separating that. So I do see all of them in there. The problem is that since I set this to be so wide, then I can say this is going to be 0.3 or something, and now I have separated them. So it's kind of like the same idea. Okay, so that one is checked. This one, okay, so if you want to do this one, the first thing you need to do, let's, let's get rid of the columns, and then uh, let's bring this to be wide again, and then I can say, you know what, I want mark bars. I actually like the other way of writing it, I think it's more concise, so let's go with that one. Now I'm actually seeing all of the bars, and the problem is that they're drawing one on top of the other. So the other thing I could do is that I can separate these things, uh, on the Y position by another field, like for instance, let's say that I want to use the index. This is something I wish it was implemented directly in Vega Light, but it's not, that, that I could access the index of, of the element. Um, so we actually have to do it manually. So there is a couple ways of doing that, actually. Before doing that, let me pass here the height. Like the easiest way in that you have more control is that you can change your data and then actually include an index in there. So uh, our way of doing that will be just by doing a mapping here and transform each one of our data points, adding an i, that's going to be the i that comes from this function that is going to return them in order, and then uh, just return d, and then something like this. Okay, so when you do that, then each one of my elements, uh, you're going to have an index in here. So we can use that for that, and then um, did I call it index or i, something like this. So if you create that, this is a weird chart, and what it's trying to do is that since I say this is going to be quantitative, and the other one is quantitative as well, then I think what Berga Light is doing in here is that it's trying to compute like a scatter bit, okay? But we want is to have like a bar chart. So in that case, when you're creating bar charts, remember that in the bar chart, the in this case, the y attribute, because it's going to be a horizontal bar chart, it should be a, a categorical attribute. So I can say that just by this, and then, then you have it, like something similar to what you had before, below. Uh, I don't really need the axis in here because it's it's uh, fake, uh, So, but it's just for dividing. So there you go. Then you have that one. Uh, for tilt, this is a little bit more complicated. I actually had to do some research for doing that. Um, Recently, Jeffrey here added this beautiful example, and then he uses one of the new channels that is the angle in here. So there is a couple things in here. Like if you actually see, he's using the mark point and the shape wedge. If you search here for angle, uh, not here. Um, like, let's see if we can find it in the different uh, elements here in the documentation. Let's search for that, um, Vega Light Angle. I just want to show you, I found before in the documentation that um, here, I think it is. So like one of the things you can change in the mark property is the actual, ah, but it's not showing it here, damn it. Angle, cool, 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 <laughs> triangle. So yeah, it's just in the example, but there is a place, and that's one of the things with that happens to me with Vega Light is that sometimes I find something in the documentation I cannot find it later. But basically, like the key of this is that if you want to create something like this, you need to do it with a mark point, and then you have to use one of the shapes that actually supports that. So wedge will be a way of doing that. So now you can see actually that's a nice chart. Um, so it's still distributing things, and then uh, it is going to show it like that. And then I can just say, you know what? I'm going to change this to be the angle. And that's it. Ah, actually, that's nice. So in here, the scale, I can also change it to be closer to what I have down there, to be that the range is going to go from minus... And then in Vega Light, the thing is that the angles start in a different position than in SVG. So I think in here it's going to go from minus 90 to 90, something like that. That's better. 
And then I actually had them, like in the lower one, I have them, like all start in the same position. I just can get rid of these two. And then it will look like this. And just to be closer, it has to be like a bigger one. Like this one has to be really big. Something like that. You can see that actually there is an error because this one is reversed uh, because of the order that it's starting. Like uh, in this one, it's starting from here and it's going that way. In this one, it's starting here and going this way because the way I built it. So I can just reverse it in this case. So it's actually showing something similar. Okay. The other one that you can do, and this can be like an extra one, is that instead of using that mark point, I think, and that's what I saw in the documentation, that's what I was searching for. And then you can say, you know what, I'm actually going to use a mark text. And then when you use the mark text, you need to say um, what um, text you're actually going to write in there. So you can say this is a penguin. Penguin. How do you write penguin in English? I hope it's like that. And then you have all of these penguins. Or you could just say this is my field and species. And then um, it still is going to have a lot of overlapping, but supposedly what it's doing in there is just writing the species and then uh, rotating the things. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm going to get rid of this because it's really ugly. Uh, area. Um, so for area, I think I can start from this one, from this one. Um, tilt area here. So if you want to create areas, it's very simple. Uh, just use the mark circle, I think you can use, or the square. And then, uh, very important, know how to write it. And uh, since we are actually going to be changing the size or the area, then you just say, I'm going to be changing the size. And then we can also keep this one in here, or you can get rid of it. And um, if you do that, yeah, it's actually by default starting in the minimum value. Or so, so it's like going to be very, very similar in the, I think. Okay, so basically these are smaller than these ones in here. You can change also the range. So it's up to you. So that one is very easy. If you want to change the color luminance, that also is very easy. You just change this for color. And then as you can see, it's guessing what are the different attributes. Uh, let's bring back the size here so it's bigger and then if you want to change the luminance remember that the key in here is changing the scale or the, the, the color range that you're using in Megalite you use that by saying what is the scheme and I think this is how you write it and then you have like pretty much the same one that we had before without the nice scale uh, for color saturations exactly the same thing but just choose uh, a different scale so Vega light will choose blues by default so if you want to use with some of the other ones then you can just change it in here take a look at the documentation for see what are the ones that you can change curvature I don't know how to do in Vega light so I'm going to skip that one for the identity channels it's also as easy as this so let's keep the circles big ones on X I am not going to use the quantitative attribute anymore I'm going to use the categorical attribute I don't need to set the scale to zero because now it's not a continuous scale. And that's uh, almost it. Uh, and then this is a numeric, a categorical attribute. So you can just let it like this. So basically like the equivalent of that will be this one. And then if you want to separate them on the screen, um, you can just do something like this. I actually don't know how to call um, randomly uh, in there but remember that we have the index so I could separate it like this okay so uh, that's for that um, if you want to use color hue same thing uh, just do this one and then just duplicate this one not only for X but also for the color and then the beauty of this is that what Vega Light is doing in here is that it's guessing that since this is categorical, then it's using categorical scales in here, and it's actually showing you the legend, which is quite useful. So uh, we can keep on going in here. Um, oh, to make it look exactly like the other one, so we can say this is going to be quantitative here, and then go to our quantitative attribute, something like that, and then let's get rid of that, although actually that was quite nice. And then let's get rid of the zero scale. 
zero false true there we go so i wonder if i can change this really quickly uh, if there is a pastel skill uh, pastels pastels one pastel one there we go so that's closer to to the other one okay so that's for that um, you can also use that with points if you want to change something more readable uh, for motion i don't know how to do in mega light so i'm going to skip that one but shape is actually very easy to do um, usually when i want to create a shape short i just do it in mega light because it's just simpler to do so i don't need this scheme so something like this and then uh, the ones that you can change the shape of is just the points and then you can see them in there so pretty much the same one um, i don't know how to do the random like i will have to do it like manually on each one of the dots um, so let's leave it out like this and that's it so basically just to wrap up in vega light um, the way that you create channels is just by doing the encoding here make sure to check the documentation so you can know what channels you can change from different marks and as you can see it's way simpler to, to to create if you want to create customizations that's when it starts getting complicated but still it's a great tool for, for creating quick charts